Guys, Ardecino is finally here and I have to say that so far Kit is looking like an absolute read though. So in this video we'll translate it for you and I will also give you my first impressions. First of all, the essentials. Ardecino is a 5 star polyarm pyro character. She's an on-field damage dealer that focuses around normal attacks. As a baseline, she's not too different from characters like a Brizzly, Yuemiya, Wanderer that can increase the normal attack damage through their kits. But in actuality, she's far more complex. Also, pretty important, she can't receive healing from other characters or weapons. Yeah. Uh, just like that, so synergy with characters like Purina is a shot. Honestly, in my opinion, this premise already makes for a quite interesting character, so let's delve into her kit. The way it works, her elemental skill is quite crucial. When you use it, will hit opponents and inflict a status called Block Depth on them. This status will hit them every 3 seconds up to 3 times, and it will also generate some stacks in the meanwhile. When Arlecchino uses her charge attack, it will clear the Block Depth on opponents and it will generate a bond of life on her, whose amount depends on the stacks the blood depth generated previously. As a reminder, the bond of life was a thing that was already available in the game before Arlecchino. Some free-to-play weapons from Fontaine had effects tied to that, and the way it works, its amount is tied to a specific percentage of the character's HP. Usually, when the character gets healed by that specific amount, the bond of life gets cleared and something else happens, but uh, since Arlecchino can't be healed at all, things are clearly different here. Specifically, for Arlecchino, the bond Bond of Life is tied to her auto attack mechanics. If she has a Bond of Life higher than 30%, she will get a 40% Pyro damage bonus and will gain Pyro Infusion on her normal, charge, and punch attacks. Additionally, her normal attacks will get a direct multiplier increase that partially depends on the current Bond of Life she has. Note that her charge and punch attacks only get the Pyro Infusion and the Pyro damage bonus, while the multiplier increases only for the normal attack. Here is where it gets really interesting. After every hit of her normal attacks, she will lose a specific amount of Bond of Life. So, after every hit, she will lose Bond of Life until it reaches 30%, where her positive effects end completely. This is rather intriguing, because it means the uptime of these effects is not tied to a specific time duration, but rather to the hits she deals. This means that if, for example, the enemy gets away from her and you have to waste time to catch up to him, or if you're facing somebody like Winnet that goes underground a lot so you can't hit him there, you won't waste uptime with Arlecchino since this uptime is completely tied to her hit count. This ties very well to the fact that for now it seems that she doesn't lose her buffs when she goes off field. So if the rotation gets extended, you can simply swap out from her, go in with a character like Kazua to reapply the sword and the buffs, then go on field with Arlecchino again to keep dealing damage. The downside of this is that as the bond of life gets lower, so does the damage multiplier tied to it, and so the more the rotation goes on, the lower her damage becomes. The maximum amount of Bond of Life you can get from the Elemental Skill is of 70% at 3 stacks of Blood Death. However, the way it's worded right now, it seems that it counts singularly for each opponent, so if you hit multiple opponents with blood depth and then claim it, you will gain more bond of life. Still, the total max amount is of 80%, so it's not much higher. On top of this, she has an elemental burst that will grant her 15% additional bond of life other than dealing AoE damage, so if you're facing one opponent, you should be able to get 85% bond of life in total. Specifically, in terms of rotation, since you have to wait some seconds for the elemental skill to fully stack the blood depth thing, it goes like this. Obviously, you start with Arlecchino's elemental skill, then you go in with your supports to activate their abilities, then after 6 seconds you go back in with Arlecchino to use the charge attack and then the elemental burst, and then you basically spam normal attacks. Note that if an opponent with blood depth gets killed before she can claim it with a charge attack, then she gains the full 70% that she would gain from it at 3 stacks. This is needed, because if the supports kill enemies during their setups, then she won't lose the bond of life anyway. So in general, her offensive kit is without a doubt messy, but all in all it seems good to me honestly. Let me remind you all that if you enjoy my content but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really helps me notice your support. The rest of her kit revolves around the fact that she can't receive healing from sources that aren't Arlecchino herself, specifically only when you are in combat, regardless of which healing method you use, so be it a dedicated healer like Jean or 
a healing weapon like a prototype Ember, you won't be able to heal Regina with it. To compensate for this huge detriment, when you use her elemental skill, if she has any bond of life, that will be cleared and she will be healing for the same amount of that bond of life. As a reminder, the total amount of bond of life she can have after the end of a rotation can't be below 30% since that's when her positive effects end, so every rotation after the first, when she uses her elemental skill, she will heal by 30% at minimum. Of course, if you preemptively end the rotation and you have more bond of life, you will regain more HP at the next elemental skill. Additionally, thanks to her second talent, based on how much attack she has, she will gain extra resistance to all attacks. The way resistance functions, it should directly cut the opponent's attacks, so that's nice. Overall though, I would say this doesn't perfectly compensate for the no healing passive, because let's be honest, it's not a lot. Like most of the time she will only heal by 30% and the damage cut is not that high and the most dedicated healers heal by much more than what she will do. Plus, it seems she has no interruption resistance, so I wouldn't be surprised if people end up playing her with characters like uh, John Lee. But honestly, the thing that puzzles me the most here is that the design seems to be that of a unit that can self-sustain and can be paired with three hyper-offensive units to magnify the team damage to the fullest. This sounds great, but uh, the problem here is that some of the strongest offensive units also happen to be healers. So, for example, Bennett, Shebrus, they are very strong offensive units that also heal. So, most likely, she still will end up getting paired with these healers, but uh, she just won't be benefiting from the healing itself. Honestly, this whole thing just seems a way to lock her out of Furina teams. Not only the lack of healing on Arechino would mean less pamper stacks, but the fact she will lose HP be through the Furina elemental skill will make her more fragile. Since right now she doesn't seem the most durable unit, I don't think that's sustainable at all. I've seen some people take this anti-Furina synergy very harshly, but honestly I kind of like it. Personally I don't think it's very healthy for the game to have so many characters rely on a specific single unit. Some of the strongest and most popular characters in the game like uh, Hu Tao, New Villet, Hal Haytham, Shao benefit a lot from Furina and I don't think we need more characters like them. Because at the end of the day, there is just one Furina, like you can just put her on one team. So I definitely welcome this change of pace with open arms. And anyway, in terms of teams, she's looking very flexible. Thing is, based on the assumptions I'm making, so 19 hits during her uptime if she uses her burst every rotation, her base damage looks pretty high. So far, I've only tested her output on three teams mainly, which are the Chevrous Electro Pyro team, the Kazua Mono Pyro team, and the Yilan Vape team with the Bennett and Kazua, and it looks like her damage could be in the range you'd see from a hyper carry while being used on a team that is not hyper based. By this I mean that she can be paired with strong sub DPS like official initial link and still reach very high levels of damage even at free to play investment. I don't want to make any comparisons yet because it's so early but from what I can tell she has nothing to envy to the stronger pyro DPS. And I can definitely see a scenario where she ends up being one of the strongest DPS in the meta at least offensively. Still her fragility is a real concern to me because if she's not durable enough and you have to pair her with characters like Jung Lee, Toma, Deya, then her damage takes a big hit. The balancing decision here seems to be making a fragile unit that can have a high offensive ceiling, but um, that doesn't make much sense to me. Because we have units like Huta or New Villet that are pretty durable, but still have a very high offensive ceiling, so that's pretty weird to me honestly. Still, I like her, I think she will be quite fun to play and also pretty powerful. And I'm done for today, if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and also go check the analysis I made on Jury a few days ago. Peace!